<laughs> Don't jump. Don't jump. Oh. <laughs> gathered together in the sight of God to witness it. Larry, you can stay up here. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to witness in the sight of God, to witness and bless the joining together of Brad and Kennedy and Christian marriage. The covenant of marriage was established by God who created us male and female for each other. And with his presence and power, Jesus graced a wedding at Cana of Galilee. And in a sacrificial love, he gave us the example for the love of husband and wife. Brad and Kennedy come to give themselves to one another in this holy covenant. Who gives Kennedy to be the bride? I do. Okay. All right. <laughs> now I ask you now. Now you can face me. I ask you now in the presence of God and these people to declare your intention to enter into union with each other through the grace of of Jesus Christ who calls you into union with himself as acknowledged in your baptism. Kennedy, I'm going to start with you. All right. Kennedy, will you have Brad to be your husband, to live together in holy marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health? And forsaking all others, be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Brad, will you have Kennedy to be your wife? To live together in holy marriage, will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live? If so, answer, I will. I will. Let us pray. God of all peoples, you are the true light shining on us. You show us the way, the truth, and the life. You love us even when we're disobedient. You sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We rejoice in your life in the midst of our lives. We praise you for your presence with us and especially in this act of solemn covenant through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'm going to read two scriptures today. All right, the first is from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and it is the love chapter of the Bible and it says if I speak in tongues of men or of angels but do not have love I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love I am nothing if I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Now the next part I'm going to read is for the two of you today. And it's for everyone here, but especially for you. Because it tells us what love is and how we need to love each other. It says love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And here we go for the two of you. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, and it always perseveres. Love never fails. Where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. The apostle says, when I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, 
then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. And I'm going to read from Ecclesiastes chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. It says, Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And then it ends with this. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. And that's where I bring my example today. Of how a marriage needs to be put together. I'm going to get you, I'll give that to you to look at. You and Kennedy can look at it and if you look at it, just a rope, right? Mm -hmm. Just an old ordinary rope. I'll show everybody. Nothing real special about it. This one's special because it's theirs. <laughs> but what I want to point out today, and it goes with the scripture, is what makes this rope strong. See, when you have a rope like this, you can see it's, Different pieces of rope intertwined with each other. And we're going to look at this piece here. Got a little piece here. But you know, this piece, can, you can do a lot with this piece of rope. You can tie things up. You can pull things. Lift things. And by itself, it can do a whole lot of different things. And the middle rope's the same way. I guess this one's the middle. The middle rope's the same way. By itself, it can do a lot of different things. And there's nothing wrong with it. And we got three ropes, three strands. And this strand over here is just as capable of doing things as the other two. But here's the fascinating thing about this rope. When I take these three strands of rope and I intertwine them with each other to make one rope, this rope can do 10 times the work of these. And the reason is because how it's put together. They're intertwined and that gives them strength. This rope needs to be an example of your marriage. Starting today. I mean, before today, Kennedy, this was you, okay? Mm -hmm. You by yourself were capable of doing great things by yourself, wonderful things lovely things and you have the world was at your hands all right brad this is you and before today you too were capable of doing great things and you have wonderful things you both have succeeded and been blessed in your life but it's not enough anymore because you're coming together to be one and what gives your marriage strength is when, starting today, you start intertwining your life together. But remember, there's a third strand. And this is what I always want to point out. The only thing that will make your marriage strong, keep it together forever, all right, is if you begin today to intertwine the third strand in your marriage, and that's God. Kennedy, we start with you. With Brad, we're coming together to be one. And you start intertwining your lives with God. You live for each other. You support each other. You love each other. But in the middle of it all, you put God. And your marriage is going to be like this rope that can't be broken. So take this rope. I'm going to give you this rope. You keep this rope with you. Remember, God has to be in the center. Mm -hmm. you know, is that something you're carrying, or are you giving that up? I'm giving up. Well, you can turn and face each other. 
Hold hands. And we're going to start with you, Brad. Okay? Repeat after me. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Brad. I, Brad. Take you, Kennedy. Take you, Kennedy. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. All right, now Kennedy. In the name of God. In the name of God. I, Kennedy. I, Kennedy. Take you, Brad. Take you, Brad. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. We have Ryan. Yes, we have Ryan. Uh, I got it. You did not. Because <laughs> <laughs> we laid them on the counter before we left. And these rings are an outward and a visible sign of an in inward and a spiritual grave. And God, we just pray that you would bless Brad and Kennedy as they wear these rings. That they would live in your peace and continue in your favor all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brad, I'll give you this. And repeat after me. Kennedy? Kennedy? I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am, and with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I have, I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right. Repeat after me, Brad. Brad. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Ta -da. And now. Now that Brad and Kennedy have given themselves to each other by solemn vows with the joining of hands, the giving and receiving of rings, by the power given to me by the Pen state of Pennsylvania and our Lord Jesus Christ, I announce to you that they are husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You may kiss the bride. Amen. Turn and face the congregation. And now it's my privilege to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Brad Weissel. Come here. Did she have you guys kiss yet? With the mask on? <laughs> no. <laughs> do you want to do that? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's hilarious.